How's it going, everybody? Um, I've seen a few posts about uh, like washout booth filters and things like that. And so I was going to do a video on my washout booth setup and how I have everything done just so you can kind of get some ideas maybe and um, save yourself some money. I mean, you can build yourself a, a filter system for your washout booth quite a bit cheaper than what you can buy one for, especially those really expensive ones like $1,200, $1,500, $2,000. I don't know many shops that need something that expensive that you can't build something similar for a lot cheaper. You know what I mean? So I just want to preface this by saying that everything I've done is probably way overboard of what you would need to do. So just keep that in mind. I had a lot of these components on hand and I did it mainly for the convenience factor. And also, um, I just like to tinker and things like that. So, but I'll show you like an overview of my washout booth and then we'll get down to the nitty gritty of the actual filtration of it. And we'll go from there. So as you can see, here's my, here's my booth. I can't remember that it's it's 36 inches wide, I believe. But basically there's like three components of it to it. There's the main booth, and then there's like the controller box up on top, which I built. And then down here, you can see underneath there is like my catch bins and my pump. I call it like the pump assembly. And then the filters. And these are not as expensive as you think they would be. Um, I'll try and put some links for where I bought a lot of this stuff, but like I said, I had a bunch of this stuff already on hand, so. But anyways, uh, probably the main thing I'll show you before I pause the video and pull the catch bins out so we can see them and look at them is probably the control box. I built this so I can have pretty much control everything from right here. Now, the only thing I might change is I might turn it or put something on it. I've been using it for a while now and I haven't ran into any issues with water spraying on it because it's definitely not waterproof. The box itself is waterproof but like these switches right here are just normal electrical switches and so if, if they were to get shot with water it would probably cause some problems but as of right now it's it's not an issue. Uh, you can see that I have just like a main power switch that turns everything on and off. Then I have the pump assembly which sends power to the sump pump down below and also controls like gives power to the float switches. I have a that controls that gives power to the pressure washer and then this here is for the the backlight. Then I have a manual pump start button which I'll explain in a second and then a pump power on and then I also have an overflow alarm and a deactivation switch so if that starts going off I can turn the alarm off because it's it's pretty loud and annoying so that's basically it of, as far as the control box and then that just comes down here into a box and then this is the control wire that goes down to the pump assembly and then this is the power wire that goes down to power the sump pump itself. This is this is what the the switches control. And then this, and then right here, I just have the wires coming out into these electrical these two electrical outlets. One outlet the pressure washer plugs into, the other outlet the backlight plugs into. So it's pretty simple as far as design goes, but it's been working pretty good. And then I have just like the main water source coming in right there on the top and then like a main shutoff valve and then that goes down to the pressure washer so I can shut I can shut the pressure washer off and also the the garden hose attachment with just that one lever there and the reason I did that is because if I move I don't know how far away the water is going to be from where I want my booth to be so I wanted to be able to shut it off right at the booth so I didn't have to walk across the shop or something to 
turn off the main water supply. So, <clears throat> but I'll pause the video now, pull out the, uh, you can see that the, the pump assembly and the catch bins are on like a rolling dolly. I'll pull that, those out and explain to you exactly how everything works. So I'll be back. One thing I forgot to mention before I pull it out is, is this uh, board here. The only reason that's on there is, is I didn't want water splashing down. Because when I designed it, I wasn't thinking very well. And uh, all the electrical components are right here in front. So I just put this board up so water wouldn't splash down and get on all the electrical stuff. So I just wanted to show that to you before I got everything pulled out from under there. Okay, so here is the bins and pump assembly from underneath there. Basically, uh, I made this like extender hose too, so I can actually pump with it when it's pulled out. So I'll be able to run it for you and show you exactly how it works. So basically, if you look under here, you can see that my drain off of my sink is pushed backwards. Okay? And that comes and the hole on the the hole on that pipe is is right about here on this back tank. So what it does is it fall like the stuff falls into the tank. And then down here I have two um this is a a bulkhead fitting and then just a piece of pipe and another bulkhead fitting. And you can see over here, I have one on the other side too. It basically just connects these two tanks and makes them and makes them one tank through the bottom. So originally I had this, I had this tank filled up with sand and it was like a sediment filter and the water was just not draining fast enough. It was, it was building up in this tank too much before this tank would kick on to pump off. So I took it out and, and this stuff is just basically um, like swamp cooler panel met like fabric. And that, I have two layers of that in there. And the next time I do it, I'll probably go three or four layers and put some screen mesh in between. I just, I basically want to catch the bigger chunks of like emulsion and stuff like that. Let me turn this water off real quick. Actually, I'll turn it off right here. So basically it falls into this first tank here. And then it somewhat gets filtered. All the big chunks get caught up in that uh, blue fabric there. And then it comes through the bottom and it comes over into this tank. And this water is fairly clean, but it's still not quote unquote filtered, right? But then it, you'll notice that there are some float switches and they are just screwed into this tank and then they come down here to this like relay assembly that I built and then they come into this box which, which uh, turn on and off the, the pump and things like that, right? So basically as far as that alarm goes if either one of these, if this float switch or this float switch gets triggered before the water gets drained out, then it'll turn the alarm on. Like, so if the water comes up and lifts this up, then it'll that alarm go off. And as soon as, as soon as the water turns off or goes lower, then it, it turns off. Same with this back one. Okay, so those two float switches are the basically overflow alarms. And you can see that that one is higher than the pump trigger. And then you'll notice the one down there is already floating. So what happens is when the water when the water raises, it will it will lift this up and it will trigger the pump to start. And as soon as that happens, it'll pump until it Now it will keep pumping and it will pump both these tanks down until that lower float switch, I don't know if you can hear the pump running, we probably can see the water lowering. As soon as that lower float switch 
drops and that switch closes, or I should say opens, then the pump stops. I mean, I can just do it like, like this with my finger. As soon as it goes down, then the pump shuts off. And the reason I did that is I know, I know a lot of pumps and everything already have float switches and whatnot. But this makes it to where I can plug any pump I want into that receptacle right there. And it will pump and shut off all automatically. If, it, if the pump comes with a float switch already attached, I would have to just manually rig that float to where it was always on, I guess you could say. But otherwise, it I feel like it gives me a little bit more flexibility as far as what pumps I use and things of that nature. Now the, the, the manual pump start button up here, basically all this button does is the same thing as that upper, that upper float switch. So, and the reason I did that was I have this here just in my in my normal garage and it can get cold in here so when I was washing stuff out I would want the least amount of water in these bins as possible in the winter time so I put that in there so when I'm done washing even if that tanks not full I can just hit it and it will it'll pump it down and then it just pumps it over here to these filters and you can see it's got about two and a half PSI, right? And the reason I put the gauge in is to help me figure out when these filters are getting plugged. But then this filter here is a 20 micron filter, and then this filter is a 5 micron. And it just comes out of here and goes straight into the drain. So, and like I said, this is, this is probably overkill for... A lot of it but if you were to just get you wouldn't need the float switches and all that stuff if you were to build it yourself um, you could just get one of these tanks like I you, you really only need one the only reason I did two was I wanted to try and filter the bigger stuff out before it got to my pump just because I didn't want like big chunks of emulsion and and ink and things like that going through my water pump if I if I could help it so that's why I did two to try and filter the bigger stuff first before it got to the pump and then the pump filters pushes the small stuff up the hose into the actual filter filters and 5 micron is plenty you could probably get away with just 20 micron like one, one 20 micron filter but the way I have it set up is is good for what I'm using it for I believe so yeah I'll get a and I'll also put a link to the schematic for this this pump I'll show it to you real quick this is a, a AC DC converter so that converts it to 12 volt DC because all these uh, mainly mainly because the the float switches would only handle low current so that converts it to um, 12 volt DC and then these relays the coils on the relays are 12 volt DC also so I needed I needed that for those as well so basically one relay is the float switch relay or is the is the, controls the float switches and then once that comes out that triggers this second relay which is the basically these float switches trigger this which triggers the pump and then this one here all this one is is the the relay for the overflow alarm so yeah it's like I say, probably overkill, but I had a lot of the stuff, and I feel like I have just as good system, if not better, than 
the big like fifteen hundred two thousand dollar setups you can buy from a screen printing supply place because I know they definitely don't come with a control box and filters and overflow alarms at least the ones I've seen don't so it's fun to build and yeah so if you have any questions you can either comment on this video or go back to the forum I posted this in and ask me there and I'll do my best to answer them hope you enjoyed my little my little project that I've been working on for the past few months so yeah thanks for watching